I have an opportunity today to tell you a little bit about an initiative that we're doing here in Ottawa that is connected to really a, a global movement um, uh, and also hopefully uh, inspire you a little bit about you know, something that young people are, are doing and are taking action on uh, with respect to hunger. And I wanted to kick it off um, just by showing you um, something that's kind of like our olives. So in, in your story, you had a, your, um, the, the gentleman that you met that was, that was killed. Um, he, I believe that was him. He was showing some of the, the last food sources that he had. And one of those three things were, were olives. And um, one way that spoke to me was I'm remembering that, that um, olives, olives grow on trees, which are really interesting creatures, trees are. Because um, when we're talking <coughs> about um, food security, for example, when we're talking about food security in Ottawa, um, there are uh, more than 40,000 people in Ottawa that are relying on the food bank every month here. It's sort of tucked away. It's hard to see. Like you might not, you might not believe that that that's happening. Um, and I'm just curious, I'd like to throw this out to you guys. How many days of food do you think are present in Ottawa for people to be able to feed themselves? If all the planes, trains, and automobiles were to shut down, how many days could Ottawa and us currently in it, how long would we be able to feed ourselves for? What do you think? Five days. It's a good, it's a good guess. It's a good guess. Anyone think more than five days? Hands up quickly. More, more? Okay, and, and, and less than five days. People are not really willing to vote. Okay, okay, but bold people here. Um, so, you know, some folks might, might think a month, you know, we're thinking, well, people have pantries, you know, there's canned food, there's things like that, there's warehouses. Um, the reality is that many people in, here and here in Ottawa um, don't have a pantry, don't have that source to go, go to, and it's three days of food that's here in Ottawa. And I don't think this is unusual for, for a modern city around the world. Um, and so when I think about those three days, um, I do remember, though, that one thing that's not factored into those three days is the food that's already growing here within the confines of our city. Um, the foods that we walk by every day and sometimes don't recognize. And a lot, oftentimes, those are growing on really amazing vertical farms. It's this new technology, and they're called trees. <laughs> um, and I wanted to share with you um, one of our uh, local... Uh, vertical farms, um, organic, currently going to waste around Ottawa, um, protein that's organic and really great for you. Um, I'm going to take uh, one of these bowls and maybe start to pass it this way, um, and one of these bowls and pass it the other way. Is anyone allergic to nuts? These would be nuts. Do not eat them. <laughs> um, uh, so what, what, have we, what have we got here? I've had a few conversations with people in advance, so don't don't, don't give away the answer. Could you skip to the green slide, please? The green things on it? Yeah, there we go. You can, um, sure, if you'd like, you can sample a nut piece. Don't eat the shell. Um, I'll leave it up to you. You're all very smart people. Don't eat the shell. Um, anyone know what these are? Here's a picture. They're, yeah, absolutely. These are walnuts. Um, and so this is what it would look like, except much, much smaller. Um, this would fit in my hand uh, if it were growing on the tree. This is our local native black walnut. Um, this is a food that has not been industrialized because no one's, no one's figured out how to crack this on an industrial scale. Anyone here an engineer? No. Oh, hey, there we go. <laughs> if you figure this out, this is a good business idea. But um, this, is, this is a food that we don't recognize. Most, most of the time we don't recognize. Canadians don't recognize this, even though this has been growing here much, much longer than me or my family. Um, well, my family especially, because I am first-generation Canadian. <laughs> um, but uh, many people would walk by this, falling to the ground, and have no idea their whole lives that potentially you just take this hull off, you dry it out, and nature has got an excellent packaging system. This keeps on your shelf for years. Years. She's really good at she's, Nature is not awesome at marketing, though. And this is why I'm giving you this message and teaching you a little bit about this, and I'm sure that where you come from, there are also native foods that there may be a disconnect from, from people around you being able to access because there, there may be a disconnect of education, simply education. Um, does, and has anyone um, tried the black walnut yet? Yeah, and verdict? What do you think? <laughs> kind of a bit of a unique taste, though. It tastes different than the ones from Costco. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother talk. That's a whole nother talk there. Um, so, 
it makes me it makes me really sad that um, you know I can walk. I know that so many people in Ottawa are going hungry, and yet I walk down the street and I see food now everywhere. Once you learn what a, you know the pattern of a tree, we are pattern recognizers, and I I'll, they just pop out at me. Um, I know that there are, there are, there's like three black walnut trees within a short walk of here. Um, I also know our, na our, our native, native service berry, which is being planted as a street tree in cities. Um, and uh, there's one special nut on top there, which is the Turkish hazelnut. That is another tree that is really withstands um, the rigors of cities that's being planted by urban forestry uh, groups around the world um, in cities. Uh, there's also the ginkgo. There's many examples of potential edibles that are being planted right, right now by forestry departments um, that we could potentially gather the food and learn how to use it um, and, and celebrate it. So um, yeah, the Turkish hazel is a pretty neat one. Take a look at that. Um, so it makes me really sad that, there, that I know there's food. I see it as I walk down the streets, and yet I know there's an educational disconnect. Um, but there's more than that. There's also, there's also fences sometimes in the way. Sometimes that fence is education. It's preventing people from access, accessing it. Sometimes it's literally a fence. That, that food is on public or private property. You see apples falling to the ground or pears, and you think, well, that's too bad. What a waste. But you walk on by. That's not yours. It's not yours to take care of. Um, so one thing that, uh, that I did is I started asking questions and I started asking what others were doing about this and it turns out um, there's groups in the UK, there's Abundance UK, there's groups across Canada and across the, across the states that are doing something called gleaning, fruit gleaning. Um, and it's rescuing fruit or nuts that would otherwise go to waste and putting it to good use. Um, so a friend and I sat down and we started something called Hidden Harvest Ottawa. Could you back up one or two slides? Um, and this is, uh, this is basically what we look like. We look like groups of volunteers picking and sharing fruit that would otherwise go to waste and sharing it within the food system. Um, and um, as I've started to do this work, we've now rescued, um, we've now rescued more than 20,000 pounds of food. Um, uh, we've, we've, we've got thousands of volunteers on our list ready to go. Um, and, uh, and, and there's no shortage. Um, and uh, as I've started to do this work, I've realized that it's not just literally accessing or getting to the other side of the fence, getting permission that's important. It's not just the education, but there's also there's something behind all that. There's that perception that that food isn't mine. And, then, and sometimes we've got people that are harvesting food on a city property, but they're doing it at night and they're being sneaky about it and they feel like they're doing something wrong. Even though they know that food's going to waste and their, their family can't afford fresh fruit. Um, and it makes me really sad that that's, it's, there's, we, we don't respect that as a, as a source of food. So one thing I can celebrate is Hidden Harvest, um, Hidden Harvest Ottawa, finding the food, hiding in plain sight. One thing we have managed to do is we've talked with our municipality, and we are the first group in Canada to officially have permission signed on a piece of paper that says we can ask, access public property and pick and share the food from that property. So um, I'm, I'm really happy to say that. There are other groups across Canada that are doing this work. And right now, it's kind of like a, you don't really ask, and you just kind of do it. But they don't officially have permission. I think it's important to give this kind of work permission on a piece of paper so nobody's sneaking around. Um, um, I, I wanted to throw that. There's a, a few other stories I could tell. I'm wondering if you guys have anything that's coming up for you. Is there, have you walked down the street at home and seen food go to waste? There's, there's, there's quite a few nods, and I know that this is an eclectic group. We're, we're, we're from around the world, and there's many nods happening. So this is not an isolated potential here. Um, when we looked at the potential just here in Ottawa, if you could skip, uh, yep. Um, when we look at, at Ottawa, here's how it breaks down. This is on public property, which um, is a minority stakeholder in Ottawa. Um, a lot of those trees are apple and crab apple. There's service berry, there's cherry, choke cherry. Um, then there's a whole bunch of nuts and other fruits. Um, but there are 17,000 fruit and nut trees on city property alone. There's, this is a huge potential source. When you think that uh, one established apple tree can provide three to 400 pounds of apples, no problem, in a season. Um, and once you get them going, if you're not too worried about perfect fruits, they really just keep offering their bounty every year. Um, and um, the foods that we're able to share within food bank and uh, within the food bank and within the food system in Ottawa, I try to really remember that we are benefiting right now from the wisdom of generations 
of, of people. Um, this black walnut, this was an anti-famine tree for the first people of Canada. This was intentionally propagated. It's not a, it's not a coincidence that this tree is here. Um, this is wisdom that I know very little about, um, unfortunately, but this is wisdom passed down. Um, and many cultures pass on their trees and they learn how to graft and they pass that on. So we're benefiting right now. We're able to share this fruit because someone thought to hand off that tree, to plant that tree in the ground and establish those roots. And um, you know, your, your friend with the olives, someone planted that tree. And I hope that, that you know, one, one message that I would give you is um, let's prevent you know, these, these situations from happening as much as possible by just putting more trees in the ground. Wherever you are, treat your backyard like your home and plant a tree, even, though, even if you might only be there for a year or two. Um, as transient students or people who are working here or there are not really sure what city you live in, maybe your boyfriend's in another city, um, treat where you are like home and plant roots. Um, I mentioned earlier that I, I'm first generation. Both my grandparents were sort of, um, both my sets of grandparents and my parents were displaced due to war, but the first thing my, my grandparents did when they arrived in Canada was, and, and they had a, first, a, a little piece of land for themselves for the first time, is they remembered to value that soil and they planted trees. Um, and they planted two cherry trees, two plum trees, um, in, in like the tiniest property you've ever seen. Um, and, uh, and you know, I grew up having the opportunity to start, kind of pick that fruit and it was just a fun, delicious thing at the time. But um, now I realize that that was my grandparents, whether they realized it or not, passing on that wisdom to me, that love of fruit trees to me. And so, trees are pretty cool. <laughs> plant, <laughs> plant them. <laughs> um, and uh, I'll just close by, I, I know there's a few, maybe a few folks from Canada, because I heard some references to Canada. Um, if you could skip ahead uh, a few slides. Um, uh, this is a program that uh, I, I also run here uh, from Ottawa, but it's Canada-wide. It's a program that empowers youth sustainability leaders across Canada. Um, if there's a training, four months of ongoing support, um, and access to funding to launch sustainability projects and initiatives that are going to improve the community. And because of this work, I know there are so many things, because I get to talk with people like you who have great ideas every day. I know there's a lot of initiatives underway. And I have incredible hope for the future because, as, as you know from all the talks, I've, I've been from talking with you, uh, many of you today, um, as we know, the more you do, the more potential you see. So Hidden Harvest has now, we've, we've picked maybe this year from about 400 of those 17,000 fruit and nut trees. So the harder I work, the more potential I see. And uh, I see a lot of potential in all of you. So thank you so much for coming to the One World Conference and giving me the opportunity to talk today.